So as a security engineer, it's common for me to use Amazon's S3 buckets for storing data. It just is a great resource that allows us to store basically an infinite amount of data. Now, one of the common use cases is putting CloudTrail logs in there or maybe data from our other security tools. And then what I'll do from there is I'll grant a vendor access into our account to pull that data out of that bucket and then put it into their platform. And typically that platform is giving some insights on the security of our AWS accounts. So what I'm gonna show you today is we're gonna have two separate AWS accounts. In this account over here, we'll have an IAM user. In this account over here, we're gonna have some S3 buckets. We're gonna create an IAM role. We're going to allow the user in this account to assume the role in our account and then be able to pull data from our S3 buckets. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so before we dive into the console and actually build this out, I'm gonna walk through this architecture diagram here. So in this case, we have two AWS accounts. We have a management account and we have a production account. Now the names here are purely just for that distinction. They don't matter in this case. Um, but if we look at the management account, we have this IAM user named Bob. Now in this example, we want to give Bob access to our S3 bucket in this production account. So in order to do that, Bob needs to assume a role in the production account, which then has access to Bob's bucket. So if we look at the steps, we have Bob tries to assume this role. It's gonna to go to the trust policy and the trust policy tied to this bucket reader Bob role is going to validate whether or not Bob is authorized to assume that role. And as an example, this is what a trust policy would look like where attached to this bucket reader Bob role, it'll say, hey, allow the principal, in this case, Bob, the ability to assume the role. And then optionally, you can put in a condition that says, hey, provide me an external ID. This field right here is completely optional to do. It's just an extra layer of validation that um, Bob is actually the one who's requesting the ability to assume this role. Now, in this case, the trust policy is going to be valid and it's going to return, um, well, the AWS Security Token Service, or STS, is now going to provide temporary credentials to Bob. Now, typically, the default is one hour, although this could be changed, meaning after one hour, Bob will lose access to this role and he'll have to go ahead and reassume it. Now, once Bob has those credentials, you can go ahead and attempt to read the bucket. And that's where the permissions policy for the IAM role is going to uh, dictate whether or not Bob is able to read the bucket. So if we look at an example bucket policy here, we can see that Bob would be allowed to list the bucket, in this case, Bob's bucket, and also get objects from Bob's bucket. So that means that any objects stored in this bucket, Bob could then download. And if we look at the results of that permissions policy, Bob would be authorized, again, to Bob's bucket, but not authorized to access anything in Sally's bucket. And that's because in the permissions policy, there's nothing specifying Sally's bucket in here. So that's how this would work. Let's go ahead and hop into the console and start building this out. Okay, so I've got two windows open here. I have my management account here, and then I have my production account over here. We're first going to start by creating a new IAM user in the management account. So we'll be sure to be in IAM, go to users, add users, and we'll call this username Bob. We're gonna give Bob access to the AWS management console, and this is going to allow him to actually log in to the console here. Now choose this option if I want to create an IAM user. Go ahead and give it a password, something that you're going to remember. There we go, so I've got my custom password there. I've unchecked this box here, so I don't have to reset that password. I'll go ahead and click on next. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to click on attach policies directly and we're going to create a new policy for Bob. Now once that loads, I'm gonna go into JSON. So what we wanna do here is we want to give Bob the ability to assume the bucket reader Bob IAM role in this production account. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna give it a SID, and now we're gonna give it an action. And so you can go over here and filter on the actions. So assume role is part of the security token service. So if you search for STS, you can click on that. And then we're gonna look for the action of assume role. And now it's added that action in there. 
So next we have to specify the resource. So if we click on add a resource, we'll leave the service as STS. The resource type is going to be a role. So we need to specify the account. And since we're going to be assuming this role in the production account, we need to know that account number. So here in the production account, I'm going to click this drop down and copy my account number. Replace that account placeholder with the actual uh, account number. And then we need the role name with path. So we haven't yet made the role in the production account yet, but we know we want to call it bucket reader Bob. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so it should look just like this. Go ahead and add the resource. Now the next thing we need to do, because we're going to log in as Bob, and we need to provide Bob a way to access this role, and we're going to do that via the Cloud Shell. So we'll add a new statement here, and then go over here and search for the service Cloud Shell. So your policy should look just like this again. We are allowing Bob the ability to assume the role, and then we're granting access to Cloud Shell. So click on Next here. We'll give it a policy name, and then Create Policy. All right, so our policy is created. Let's go back to our tab over here where we were creating the Bob user. Click on this uh, little refresh icon. Here's our new policy name. We'll click on next here, then create the user. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to sign out of this uh, user and then log in as Bob. All right, so that should have worked for you. And let's go to Cloud Shell and initialize that and ensure that it works. All right, so that should have worked just fine for you because we gave Bob full permissions to Cloud Shell. So now we are gonna go into the production account and we wanna make sure that we have two buckets created, one for Bob and then we'll create a Sally bucket. So I've already created the one for Bob. I'll create a second one here. This is the same configuration I used for Bob here. We'll leave everything default. Go ahead and create the bucket. The next thing we need to do is create this IAM role, Bucket Reader Bob. I'm gonna go ahead and just open up a new tab because we're gonna flip back and forth. So we'll go to IAM and we're gonna go to Roles and then Create Role. In this case, I'm going to use a custom trust policy. And again, kind of similar, we're gonna set this up. And that's gonna be it for the trust policy. So we're going to allow Bob the ability to assume the role. Click on Next. Now we need to give it a permissions policy. Create a policy. So your policy should look like this. It's going to allow the ability to list buckets on these resources, as well as get object, which will allow us to copy objects that exist in that bucket. And then put objects will allow us to put objects into the bucket. Click on next, give it a policy name, go ahead and create the policy. And once it's created, go back to the IAM role creation, do a refresh here, and you should find the bucket reader Bob policy. Scroll down and click on next. And let's give it a name and click on create role. And now we can click on our new role here. We can see that we have a permissions policy which enables us to access that bucket as well as the trust policy which allows the user Bob and our other accounts to assume the role into this one. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go back into the management account. And then what we're gonna do is ensure that we are in fact the user Bob. So we'll do it like this and then go ahead and hit enter once you've typed that in. And this is gonna tell us who we currently are. So we are in fact Bob. All right, so now that we know that we're Bob, we want to assume the role that we just created in the production account. So to do that, just type in this command here. We're gonna do assume role and then the role ARN. We need to get the roles ARN. We'll copy that there, paste that there. We can go ahead and type in role session name. I'm gonna do it as bucket reader Bob. And then we can go ahead and hit enter. It's gonna give us some credentials. And it looks like I have an error. So let's see, it says that my user Bob is not authorized to assume this role. All right, so we have bucket reader Bob as lowercase. If we go into the production console, we have it as uppercase. So we just need to go ahead and copy this ARN and update our policy here and then go ahead and save that. Now let's go ahead and try that one more time. It should just work, and there we go. Okay, so now we have the credentials for that role. And the way we can do this is one way we can type in AWS configure dash dash profile, and then we'll give the profile a name, and I'll call it uh, Bucket Reader Bob. Hit enter, it's gonna ask you a couple questions. The first one is the access key ID. Just copy this 
paste that. The second one is going to be this secret access key right here. Copy that. It's going to ask you for the region. We can just leave this as default. And then the output format, again, just leave as default. So what that did is that created a local file. And we can go ahead and read that local file just like so. so. We created this credentials file and it set up the profile that we named as Bucket Reader Bob and added these access key IDs and the, access, the secret access key. But one thing that's missing is the session token. So go back up here and make sure you copy this whole session token here. We're gonna go ahead and update this file by using Nano, which is a text editor, and then go to that file. So we're gonna do AWS equals and then just paste the key. And it should look just like that. So to save this, I'll do a control S and then a control X. And now we have the profile saved. Try that again. And now we are in fact the bucket reader Bob profile. So going back to our diagram, we are Bob. We assumed the bucket reader Bob. And now we want to basically list these buckets. So we created the two buckets earlier, Sally's bucket and Bob's bucket. And so we shouldn't be authorized Sally's bucket because our permissions policy doesn't allow it. We can go ahead and validate that by running this command here. And this should fail. Yep, access denied when calling list buckets. Now if we go back to our permissions policy to understand why that's failing, we have the action of list bucket, but only on these two resources. So if we go ahead and capture the bucket name, Bob's bucket, in my case, 8764. Let's go ahead and try that command again. This time, we're gonna list on this specific bucket. So we'll do S3 colon slash slash, and then the bucket name. So the command's gonna be super similar. Go ahead and run that, and this should work just fine. And it does, we don't get an error message. But it doesn't return anything either, and that's because if we look at that bucket, there's no objects in there. So let's go ahead and fix that. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna put some text into a local file, just like that. So what does that do? If I do an ls here, I can see it's created a file. If I do cat to read that file, we can see my text of hello there. So this is a local file. Let's go ahead and upload that to the bucket. And we're able to do this because if we look at the bucket policy, we can put objects into the bucket. And this will copy, yep, successfully uploaded our management file to the S3 bucket. So now what happens if we go ahead and try to list on that bucket again, we should see our management file. And we do. We can validate that by going into the bucket, doing a refresh here, and we can see the file. Now what I'm gonna go ahead to do is demonstrate, let me clear my screen. Uh, we have that local file. Let's go ahead and remove it. So if I do another LS, we can see that that file is gone. So now what we're gonna demonstrate is the ability to get objects from the bucket, which again, we have that permission to do so, S3 get object. So we're gonna do AWS S3, and then we'll do copy, and then it's going to be uh, the bucket name again. And then the path to the file, we just have it at the root of the bucket. So it's gonna be management underscore file, and we're going to put it in this local directory. So we can do that with a dot, and then we need to specify the profile that we created, and that should copy successfully. If we do an ls, we can see that the file's right here. We can read that file again and see we've successfully copied it. All right, so if we just kind of recap here, we had two AWS accounts. We created a new user named Bob, we also created a IAM role in the other account. Uh, using the trust policy, we gave Bob the ability to assume the role and created a permissions policy to allow us to interact with Bob's bucket. And as always, thanks for watching and be on the lookout for future AWS hands-on videos.